Welcome to our EdLab tutorial about Genially. Today, we're just going to focus on the gamification part of Genially. I'm Laura, and I'll be your guide as we navigate how to use Genially to gamify your content. With the gamification portion of Genially, it is ideal for motivating, evaluating, and reinforcing intake and retention of information. Before we jump into Genially, I need to tell you, you can create, and the students can create, much more within Genially. Feel free to explore, but this tutorial will only focus on the gamification portion of Genially. The first thing we need to do is navigate to Genially on any web browser. If you don't have an account, we will need to sign up. In order to create your free account, you need to enter your date of birth and click continue. We are going to click sign up with Google since we all have a Google account through school. Click accept and continue. You will need to pick education. Click continue. If you are signing up, you will select teacher, select whatever grade that you teach at. Click start. As soon as you get logged in, you will be brought to what can you create with Genially page. Here's where you see all the different things that you can create. We are going to select gamification today. We're going to click create. Now we are at the gamification page. If we look over to our left, we can see we can create quizzes, games, and escape games. Also, you'll notice some have stars that are in yellow that are premium. Since we are only a free version, I am going to go to the top where it says all premier, premium and free, and I'm going to click the down arrow. I want to deselect premium by clicking on the blue check mark. So that way all the templates that I see are now free. The nice thing about Genially is all of the templates are very formatted. All you have to do is add your content. We're gonna begin with creating a quiz. Before I pick a template, because if you notice, there are a lot of different quiz templates as I scroll down. There's images, there's characters, there's music room, room quiz, puzzle quiz. If I wanna just see what it looks like, I can click on the bottom in the white bar and it's gonna bring up a preview of what the template is going to be. So if you notice, it might actually not be in English. Some of it's gonna be written in Latin, but you can actually go through and see what exactly this is going to look like. On the templates, if you click, if you click right answer, it will always do exactly what it's supposed to do for the right answer. For this one, you can see a picture is going to be revealed. I can also switch the palette at the bottom if I want. As I'm looking at this one and thinking about my students, I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know if they'd really be engaged by this. So let's click the X out of that. Let's see if we can find one that I think is more engaging. After playing the wheel quiz, I feel like my students will really enjoy creating one of these or also playing one of these. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom and click use this template. Once you click use this template, you will actually be brought to an editable version of the template. Anywhere there is text, you can double click and you're going to rewrite in the text that you want. I have gone through every slide and updated the question and also the right and the wrong answers, ensuring that I've only typed the right answer into where it says right answer. With the wheel game, basically all it is is a really cool animated slideshow that Genially has developed. So every time somebody plays the game, they'll receive the same points and the same spins every time. Once I have verified that all of my information is correct, if I go to the top, I can preview it if I want to go all the way through it one time, or I can say, you know what, I'm ready to publish this. Let's click all set. Public online is already selected. We do want to give the wheel quiz a name. I'm going to name mine Life Science, and I can enter a description if I'd like. I don't have to. My description was just all about life cycles and the functions of the parts of the cell. Unfortunately, the private and protect with a password are premium options, so we cannot select those. Last step, 
click all set. We have three different options at this point. We can present it. So if we wanted to present this full class and play the game together, we could. We can also share it. We are not premium members, so we cannot download it, but we can share it. When we click share, we will get a link that we can then copy and paste onto our Canvas course or into a Google Doc if you wanted them to review it. Once you've copied that link, you're gonna click the X. That is how you now have created a quiz and you can share it with your students. In order to get back to our creations, we can always click the genially up in the, the icon up in the left-hand corner, and it takes us back to the beginning. And here's where you'll have all of the, your genialies that you've created are all going to be right in this main section. You can also use genially to create a game. So, so far we've done quizzes. Let's look at how we're gonna do the game portion of gamification. Select gamification again. The one thing I always do is I always come up here to the all premium and free and I unselect that premium because I don't want to fall in love with the template and then realize I can't use it. I also am going to come over to the left and just select games. So it jumps me straight down to the game templates. What I would do first is I would look over the different templates to find one that you think your students would like. The board games that they have on here, you can definitely use except there's no automatic feedback in the board games. So they would be playing with partners or a group of people on one iPad. And if you would type questions into there, they would have to know if they have the right answers or not. I really enjoy the secret clues one. When I click on it, it brings up a preview. So I can always look through to see what it looks like before I decide if I want to use this template. At the bottom, I can select a palette. So I'm going to select the purple palette, click use this template. It now brings up an editable version of the template. Once again, there are a ton of different things that I can edit, I can add, I can change on Genially, but to keep it super simple, all we're gonna do is edit the slides that are already here. So I can change the title of secret clues, I can give directions. When I come down to question one, this is where I'm only going to have, if you see one right answer, and two wrong answers. I'm always going to type the right answer where it says right answer. I'm going to type wrong answer where it says wrong answer. Once again, I am double clicking on the boxes to bring up the blue highlights so that I can edit what I want. Now that I've done question one, I would move on to question two. If you notice, there are more wrong answers on slide two. So we're increasing the level of difficulty. If I go down to question six, there are many wrong answer choices. I also don't love this template color, so I'm gonna see if I can change it to something different. There, I like that template color better. I can see my right and wrong answers a little bit better. In order to do that, all I would do is click this palette. It brings up the document colors. At the end, it would say, congratulations, you have passed all the clues. Once again, you can edit this if you'd like, and you can change this instead of detective winner, if it's, you could do grammar champion or whatever you want. Once you have edited all the slides, just as in the quiz section, click all set, and you will publish and you can have that link to either copy or you can play full class. Finally, the last type of creation that we're gonna talk about in this video today to help gamify our classroom is the escape rooms. Once again, click create genially. Select gamification deselect the premium. Finally, select escape games on the left. Once again, you will notice there are a lot of different templates for an escape room. This one does take a little bit more upfront prep time by you. 
However, the students will absolutely love it. Basically, what Genially has done with these escape rooms is they've taken multiple templates from their quizzes and their games, and they've combined them into one and created an escape room. So the students will have different missions or challenges that they have to overcome in order to break out. A great way to review content. I know that video games are super popular right now, especially the old time video games. I want to try to look and see what this breakout video game looks like to see if it might fit. On this front page, there is definitely nothing that I need to change. However, if I wanted to, I can change the title. So instead of breakout video game, I could have the title of whatever my topic is that I want students to be practicing. This is a would be a great review game for like before a test, just to get them giving you the information that they know. I am going to go up and give my Genially a title. This is where I really want to make sure my title matches the content so I, when I come back, I can remember. Just like all the other ones, I will need to go to each slide and edit them to the content that I want. And remember, if I'm not sure what, what page will look like when they're actually playing something, I can always go up to the eye and it will preview the exact slide that I'm on. When I get to the introduction slide, this is when I would like explain what the mission is. So say somebody traps somebody in a video game, basically mines elements of literature. So maybe there's a character that's trapped in a video game and it's their job to break them out. So as you can see, you'd want to come up with something a little catchy that would intrigue them to then solve your mystery. On the missions page, there's nothing that I'm going to need to edit. It already has the names of the games. I will then come down and actually start building the escape room and all of the different missions. The first one is space. They're going to be able to play a game. I would have to come over here and do questions and answers and also in, insert a picture. If I ever make a mistake, there is this lovely magic undo button up here that I am a huge fan of. With the space game, I do have to enter in a picture. Let's figure out how we do that. If I click once on the image, I'm then going to click replace. The nice thing is with Genially, it actually gives me Pixabay, or I could even go to Giphy and find something if I wanted. So I know my question is about elements of fiction. Let me just search fiction and see what I come up with, see if I find something. I didn't find anything with fiction, so I'm going to search literature. Choose an image you like and click replace. As you can see, the picture is now there. I would have to then go through and continue completing all the levels of the space game. As you see, level two of five. As you can see, I will have to go all the way to level five of five with questions. When I move on to slide 11, I realize it says the number of this mission is one, which makes me realize that they are gonna have to enter a passcode. So now I need to figure out what passcode do I want them to have? And then I'm gonna have to go in and edit the passcode. Let's see how we find the passcode. If I come down to the bottom, I see list and then I see grid. If I click the grid button, it will take me to all of the slides in a grid view. If you notice, the last slide that says password has a key on it. I will need to click that key in order to change the passcode. Let's check out and see what the passcode is right now. I can't even see it. If I click the I, it tells me the passcode is 1234, which is way too easy. So instead, I want to change it to something different. Once I type in my password, 7862, which are just four random numbers that I made up, I want to make sure I go back and then change those slides that give the students the passcode. To go back to the individual slides on the left, I click list, or I can go through and I know Wherever it says congratulations, they're going to get a number. So the first mission is space. I'm going to click slide 11 and know that I have to put a seven if they win that game. 
I have come to the end of mission one. And I remember my passcode is 7862. This number needs to be turned into a seven. I will continue doing this to the other three slides that have congratulations written on them and adding the correct number. Putting an eight there because that is the second mission ending. Putting a six because it's the end of the third mission. And finally a two because it's the end of the last mission. What I wanna do is I want to make sure to go back to the password page and try it out to make sure it works. I'm back at the password page where they need to enter in their password. I want to preview it to make sure my 7862 passcode works. Click the I. I'm going to click the word password. And remember, it's 7862. I'm going to click the arrow and see if it was correct. It worked. It sent me to the congratulations page. So perfect. I know my new passcode works. I've taken the time to fill in all of my different levels of my different missions. And now I'm ready to share this escape room out. In order to share the escape room, just as the other ones, I would click all set and copy that link and share it, or we could play it as a class together. But I think this would be best played individually or with a partner. And there you have it, folks, genially, the gamification portion from quizzes to games to finally those escape rooms. I'm Laura from the ISG signing off. Have a great day.